recognized and awarded for bringing people together to collaborate on innovative research and for significantly advancing research in the field of material science, Lucas Bickler is one of UBC's finest and indeed a player in UBC's next big thing. Dr. Lucas Bickler is an associate professor with UBC's Okanagan campus, the department or faculty of engineering. Your special interest is in material science, but for somebody like me who doesn't really know what that is, how would you explain that? Material science is essentially a study of how do we work with materials, how do we make materials that we learn about in chemistry class, about the fundamental elements, and how do we take that and make it into useful products that our society is using on a regular basis. For example, taking iron, which is found in ores, and turning that into steel. And how do we make that into a functional product? And everybody knows that steel is used in so many different That's applications. Correct. What is your professional background that allows you to do this kind of research? So I actually took a very interesting path to get where I am today. I did my undergraduate studies in aerospace engineering. Oh, okay. And I did my master's in mechanical engineering. And then I did my PhD also in mechanical, but now specializing in materials and manufacturing. You know, it's not unusual for somebody to change their area of study sort of right in the middle or, mm -hmm. or uh, get interested in something else. How did that happen for you? The one thing that I was thinking about is really to make sure that at the end of my studies I was able to find a job. And so, of course, you want to be trained in ways so that you can open the most doors in the future. And so materials is actually something, or material science, is a discipline which is universal to aerospace engineering, mechanical, automotive, marine, and essentially anybody who is designing something, they need to know about the materials and how they behave. And so I thought that with this background, I'll be able to open many doors in the future. You've been here since 2009? Correct. What kinds of things have you been working on since you've been here? Well, I think that I'm one of the really lucky people because I don't have just one lab, but I have two labs which are both materials science related and so I try to help out two different industries or two different disciplines one being the automotive industry and so I established a metal casting laboratory where we work with aluminum and magnesium alloys and so that's one approach to making materials and the second laboratory that I have is so uh, so-called spark plasma sintering lab which is something quite exciting. There are not too many people in the world working on in this area. This is essentially a process which lets you create any kind of material. And so essentially with these kinds of capabilities, here at UBCO, we can make almost any kind of material that the industrial uh, people would need. When you say that, I just mm -hmm. have all these things flash in my mind, any kind of materials. Again, give me some examples what that might be. So essentially, if you imagine, for example, trying to make a material, or if we simplify it, taking water and uh, oil, those two will never mix to give you a homogeneous structure. Mm -hmm. And so there are many materials which behave the same way. It's very difficult to mix them. And so the spark plasma sintering machine that we have here, it works by taking materials and turning them into a powder and then you can mix the powders in any way you wish and then the machine will turn the powder back into a solid piece of material. And so if I could take powder of oil and powder of water, I can mix the powders and create a homogeneous or uniform material and then fuse it back into a solid piece of material. And that can be used in different ways in different applications, unlike yeah any kind of material that's been created before. That's correct. So for example, we can introduce additives or introduce new compounds into the material which are extremely difficult to introduce in any conventional way. So what are some of the industrial applications that, that you've discovered or that you've looked at because of some of these materials you are looking at creating? So for example, in the metal casting laboratory, we were working on developing new high temperature magnesium alloys. And probably, you know, people know about the desire that automakers would like to have more fuel efficient cars, mm -hmm. better performance. And so one way to do that is to make hybrid vehicles. And making hybrid vehicles, it's, there's a challenge. The batteries are expensive or 
uh, it adds weight to the cars. Mm -hmm. So one alternative way to make cars perform better is to use very ultralight materials, such as aluminum and magnesium alloys. And so we have been very fortunate that, in, again, in the lab here at EBCO, we can create our custom alloys and then test them, look at their performance. And we actually have been working with General Motors and with magnesium companies and with NEMAC Canada, who are suppliers to the automakers. And so hopefully one day there will be an alloy which was maybe designed or developed here, which will make it to your commercial cars. In our other lab, uh, what we are doing is trying to develop new kinds of ceramic materials. And these are not the kinds of ceramics that you would find you know, at home hardware store for kitchens or for bathrooms. Okay. These are very high strength, very high performance technical ceramics. For example, we have been working with Atomic Energy of Canada Limited, who is overseeing the nuclear program and development of nuclear technology. And so the ceramics that we were working on are actually intended for the next generation of nuclear reactors. And so we have done some interesting work on trying to develop new ceramics with very unique and very, I would say, almost exotic properties. When you say exotic properties, mm -hmm. is that just because they're so unusual, the combination of properties you put together make this really, really unique? That's correct. And for example, some of the blending that we have done in our uh, Spark Plasma Sintering Laboratory we have used so-called carbon nanotubes. And so a lot of people heard about maybe nanomaterials. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that we have tried to do. And we have created new kind of nanomaterials, which are maybe five times harder, or they outperform the conventional alloys about five times. You know, you've been talking about working with industries like GM and some other companies. How important is it to have collaborators mm -hmm in the industry that work with you to see the success of, of your research? You know, I think that as engineers, this is something we always like to do. We like to solve the real world issues. And so I think that I've been very lucky that we had industrial partners working with us. Mm -hmm. And they are the ones who are able to take it and carry it further into you know, commercialization and to, into uh, production. You know, when it comes to, let's say, securing funding, that is also very important to make sure that we are not only doing theoretical or hypothetical research, but it is really using the results to a good use. You said it about funding. Mm -hmm. How important is getting funding to do what you do and having the right people connect with you with that funding? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we have had government laboratories, other universities, and of course our industrial partners all working together on, for example, developing of these ceramic materials or these aluminum and magnesium alloys for the auto industry. And it really is just a reflection of the fact that nobody is an expert in everything mm -hmm. and nobody has all the labs and all the instruments. And so we have been working with, for example, Canadian Neutron Beam Center in Chalk River. We have been working with the international universities, for example, with the Indian Institute of Technology in India. And for example, by these collaborations, we have students traveling between UBC and these Canadian uh, government labs, or even students coming, let's say, from India to UBC to do some experiments here, and then they do more work when they come back to India. You know, when you're talking about research, one of the things that's so important in the fact of, of why research mm -hmm. is done on a university campus is the involvement of students. Mm -hmm. So how involved do they get and what input to, do they have in the research? My research is experimental. And so we actually really have to begin with making our raw materials and the students, that's where they come into the lab. So they are involved with making of the raw materials, creating them, using the casting equipment that we have or the spark plasma sintering machines to actually create bulk materials. And then of course they do the testing or the so-called characterization to look at the internal structure of the material, look how it performs under different environments or under different conditions. And so the students are very much involved in every single step. I've been very lucky that I had some really great students working in our, in our research. The 
opportunity that students have to work in your labs mm -hmm. with you gives them that hands-on experience. How does that prepare them for when they leave the university? Well, I have to say that I'm very lucky because all of my students, immediately after they were finished with their degrees, they're working in the industry. And so they're working for automotive companies, for the oil and gas sector, and you know, maybe even student who is not working or who has worked on nuclear materials, it doesn't mean that they have to work in the nuclear industry, mm -hmm. but the skills that they learned about how do you develop a material, how do you test it, how do you optimize it, those skills are very much transferable. And so these students can go and work in almost any industry where materials are used. Have you seen any successes that any of your students have had in the field? Do they come back to you and tell you how things are going? Yes, yes. And so, for example, some of the students are actually hired not only as engineers, but more so as research engineers. Mm -hmm. And so they help their companies develop new processes and new materials that would help these industrial companies or partners to develop new technology, which is ultimately the the goal of what we're trying to do. What do you hope that you'll see come out of all this research that you're working so hard with? You know, it's a, it's a very interesting question, Rosemary, and it's a tough one to answer. And the reason why it's a tough one to answer is that with the material fabrication equipment that we have, we can support many different kinds of technology developments, being it nuclear industry, being it automotive, or being it semiconductors, or you know, even your laptop cases, they're made out of, let's say, aluminum or magnesium alloys. So the application is very diverse. But I think that the, the underlying idea is that here at UBC, we can do things that not too many people in Canada or internationally can do. And so to be able to be one of the leaders who can create our own material, which then other people would use in their own technology development, I think mm -hmm. that that's the exciting part. If you could imagine mm -hmm. 20 years from now, how would you like to have seen some of the materials that you've been working mm -hmm. with? How would you like to see them used? What would you like to leave as a legacy? I think that you know, in terms of being able to discover new materials, again, it does open new opportunities for somebody else then to take this new material and further develop it into a commercial product. And I think that that's the ultimate goal. So some of the work that we have been doing, for example, with semiconductor materials, these are materials that probably maybe within the next 15, 20 years, somebody can use to develop these next generation of computers, ultra-fast computers. And so it would be wonderful to know that maybe when my kids or grandchildren are using these computers, that you know I took part in development of that technology. If you could talk to the Lucas that was in university mm. and just give him some words of encouragement or words of advice, mm. what, would, what would you have said to, mm. to yourself back then? You know, the, the famous uh, saying that pick the path least taken, mm. right? Because if you are really trying to be at the forefront of innovation, you have to go where people have not gone before in a way. And uh, there are challenges. And of course, if you are trying to develop something that nobody has done before, especially if it's experimental research or experimental mm -hmm. work, there will be many hurdles. And so the idea of, you know, keep going, you know, you can do it, that's important to keep the positive attitude. Lucas, thank you so much for coming in and talking to us today. And I really do look forward to seeing what new materials we'll see come out of your labs in the future. Thank you, Rosemary. It was a pleasure. And that wraps it up. Thanks for watching.